Hey everybody, this is Mallory Grimsby, teen therapist from Woodbridge, Connecticut, and I am here for the last installment of the Ask a Teen Therapist with Mallory Grimsby experiment for the month of June. It is June 28th, 2018. Um, I have a special announcement about this series at the end of the video, so make sure to stick around for that. Uh, so today, I'm going to be answering the question of what is my favorite coping skill? So if you ever hear me talk, I talk about coping skills all the time. I think they're awesome. I think we know more about them than we give ourselves credit. Um, but I'm before I go over that, I just have to go over my little mini disclaimer. So as you know, um, everything that I talk about and discuss in these videos are for informational and educational purposes only. This is not psychotherapy. This is not counseling. If you need to work with a professional, you should go ahead and find one and hopefully locally. That way they're aware of the resources in your area specifically. All right, now that that is out of the way, uh, let's just jump right into it. For our last one, what is my favorite coping skill? Well, first we need to go over what coping skills are, because if you're not familiar with what they are, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about. So coping skills are things and strategies that we do each and every day that help us hang in there through the intensity of an uncomfortable or stressful situation. So what does that mean? Sometimes people think, oh, coping skills don't work for me. They work for us every single day. <laughs> Uh, when I was in grad school, I took a course all about crises and managing crises and assessing for crisis and everything. And one of the statistics that always stood out to me was that each and every day, we go through at least three to seven crises every single day. That means three to seven times we are managing stressful situations every single day. That's the average. So it could be more, could be less, depending on the day, depending on the situation, the person. So we're already naturally doing a great job of managing our stressful lives. So kudos to us. You should feel good about that. <laughs> um, coping skills can help us hang in there through the intensity of emotion. So that doesn't mean that the emotions go away. It doesn't mean that you never feel bad. That's not life. Sorry. <laughs> um, they, it just helps through that initial intensity so that we can get it back down to a manageable level so that we can then problem solve in a clear state of mind and make a wise decision for ourselves. That's all that coping skills are. Sometimes it doesn't take one. It can take six to eight. So just keep that in mind. It's kind of like if you haven't eaten all day and now it's like 2 p.m. and you're like starving and somebody gives you, um, I don't know, they give you um, a cheese stick. Like, yeah, you've technically eaten, not enough to make you feel full. So just something to keep in mind. Same thing with coping skills. If you are at a, like a level like nine or even 10 on a zero to 10 scale of intensity, and somebody says like, oh, just take a few deep breaths, Okay, you may have decreased that a little bit, but you're gonna need a lot more than that to get back down to a manageable level where you're thinking clearly and able to um, figure out the problem at hand. So one thing that's good about therapy is that one of the very first things that we often do is go over what's already working in terms of coping skills and introducing new coping skills that are healthy and manageable and easy to absorb. Okay, that's just everything about coping skills. So what is my favorite coping skill? My absolute favorite coping skill is deep breathing because you can take it with you everywhere and you're always with your breath. I have um, a really cool video. Well, I think it's cool. It was one of my very first videos that I ever did. So please be kind if you go and see it. Um, all about how to deep breathe over at my YouTube channel. Uh, so if you're catching this on the replay later, um, over on YouTube, you can go ahead and hit the subscribe button. If um, you have no idea how to get to that YouTube channel, uh, just go to YouTube and type in Mallory Grimsby and it should pop right up. 
All right, so uh, maybe I'll include the, the link to that later. So that's my absolute favorite, but everybody talks about deep breathing and I don't wanna take up your time talking about deep breathing. So my other favorite coping skill actually has a lot of other very long-term benefits. And that is, get my prop, drinking water. So this is like, I love this little water bottle. Um, here it's got pink um, designs on it, like zebra print which I think is nice. So what is cool about drinking water that can literally cool you down. See what I did there? <laughs> uh, when we are really stressed out or overwhelmed or going through an intense emotion, our bodies tend to heat up. And so if our bodies are heating up, it's telling our mind like, oh crap, I don't like what's happening. And so it, it like speeds everything else up, but it thinks that we're in danger. So if we can cool our bodies down naturally, that's gonna help get back in control of our thinking and our feeling. Drinking water is great because it also helps you produce saliva, which I know is kind of gross. But what's really cool about saliva is, is that it has calming properties. So if you are cooling down your body by drinking cool water and also producing saliva by drinking water, you're having a double whammy. Uh, the third whammy is that Staying hydrated is something that is so important for our ongoing emotional state. If we are not taking care of our basic needs, which is nutrition, exercise, hydration, um, I could go on and on, it's going to affect our mood. So if we are staying hydrated, um, that's just going to help that much long, more in the long run too, not just in the immediate short term. Uh, so you kind of got a bonus. You got two coping skills out of me today. Uh, if you think that you could benefit from learning more coping skills, you know, feel free to go ahead and reach out to me. You can um, email me at help at MalloryGrimsey.com or you can head over to MalloryGrimsey.com for more information just in general. And just as a reminder, uh, I am still accepting applications for Teen Girls Therapy Group. Um, we are still enrolling people for the summer now that it is summertime. Even more of a reason to stay hydrated. It's hot out there. <laughs> so go head on over to MalloryGrimsey.com if you want more information about Teen Girls Therapy Group or if you want to go ahead and schedule a phone consultation with me. Uh, so here is my other announcement. I have really, really loved, loved, loved doing these Ask a Teen Therapist. Um, I think they're really fun. I think you guys seem to enjoy them. So if you do, please go ahead and like, comment, share, subscribe, all of the above, you know the drill. Um, let me know somehow. And if you'd like to keep this going, let me know that too. Uh, I'm thinking at this point uh, for the month of July, I know it's going to be a little busy with summer plans and everything. So I probably won't keep up with it weekly. But this is something that I think I will do again in the near future. Um, maybe I won't just have it be Ask a Teen Therapist. Maybe it will just be general information, too. I know uh, one of the topics that comes up a lot is, you know, how do you know when you're done with therapy? So that's probably going to be coming up soon, too. All right, everybody. Thank you so, so much for joining me. Don't forget that Teen Girls Therapy Group is enrolling. And if you are catching this later, um, check in and see if we're, we're still accepting people um, or are being set up for the wait list. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day and be well.